In recent times, there has been a reoccurrence of outbreak of environmental sanitation-related diseases. This disturbing development has compelled medical experts and even government to dig deep on how to curb this threatening epidemic and, if possible, eradicate it completely. So we're putting the searchlight on the hygiene practices of Nigerians, particularly environmental habits. The major culprit is open defecation. Statistics indicate that about 771, that is excluding only three local government areas in Nigeria, are still grappling with open defecation with 25% of the population indulging in this unhealthy practice. Now, that is alarming, isn't it? That's not all. Nigeria is also ranked third in the world behind Indonesia and Pakistan as countries with the highest prevalence of open defecation. Disturbingly, 88% of diarrhea cases in Nigeria are traceable to open defecation with water sanitation and hand washing following in its trail. Now you'll agree with me that we have a major problem at hand with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 6 now in progress with 2030 as its target year. All hands are on deck to double efforts towards safer and healthier Nigeria. Obviously, a lot still needs to be done. Information dissemination is key, especially for rural dwellers, and that's why we will get all the information we can from experts here and now on the issue of improving hygiene practices, which is on our radar in this edition of Nigeria Today. My name is Kande Daniel. And I'm glad to anchor. Welcome. Yes, the program is Nigeria Today. And with me in the studio to take a critical look at the topic, improving hygiene practices, is Semiye Michael. Semiye Michael is a public health expert. Great to have you here. <laughs> Great, uh, Nigerians. Nice catching up with everybody. Thanks so much. <laughs> also on this midweek edition of Nigeria today is Dr. Isaac Akuma Ebuja, who is a public health expert, uh, formerly on the staff of the United Nations. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Good evening, Nigerians. Uh, my first question is an unpleasant one, but we must tackle it. Samiye, how did we rise or rather descend to the position of number three in world ranking of open defecation practices? Well, we, we, it's, it, it's not a magic and it's not something we should contend about. Nigerians, we know what we are by nature and we know what has been over the years. World Bank re uh, released a, a report recently that shows that between 2009 or 1990 and 2015, in water supply alone, Nigeria dropped from 35% to just 7%. And health is not just a grammar. Health is almost a living being with us. And we've had issues over the time. The attitude of Nigerians, including facility provisions by government, our budgetary allocations, how they are being budgeted for in assumption and not just in needs. They don't match up with assessment. We just provide based on assumptions. People sit in offices and cook certain issues as what, uh, or assume that that's what people need. Eventually, there has not been progress over the years. We've sat almost at the same point. Unfortunately, we were not progressing. And... If you are not progressing, what comes to you is you retrogress. And that is exactly what has catch up with Nigeria at the international scene, that we now see rocketed figures 
in areas. They talk of open defecation is one. Provision of water is one. Wash access to uh, basic health facility is another. Each of these segments of health practices now have high, you know, uh, high rocketed uh, figures in terms of decline in Nigeria. It's not an accident, and it's not something that is fabricated. This is just the situation we find ourselves in Nigeria. Oh. Unfortunately, if something is not done, we are already lacking behind in the, in the uh, implementation of the SDG Go 6. Oh. And if not, if we don't run, we right. we'll, just we'll, simply we'll, we'll, we'll not get back to We'll get to get back to assessment of uh, you know, how far we have come in implementing or trying to achieve that goal. But I think we should uh, hear from Dr. Egoja. Uh, do you think, sir, um, that uh, you agree with him in identifying attitude and budgeting or funding as some of the major reasons for us cultivating this unhealthy habit. Yes, I agree, and I would even want to add that uh, aside from budgeting for health, uh, we lack behind in terms of uh, public welfare. If you go to many states in Nigeria now, they are not paying salaries, and uh, when people are poor, they are frustrated, and uh, they live carelessly sometimes, and sometimes they live uh, only to the level that they can cope with. A staff who is used to getting salary and being able to buy toiletries at the end of the month or at the beginning of the month, and who has not been paid for six months or more, uh, now becomes unable to, uh, to cater for himself or herself and the family. And therefore, for example, if they were used to having enough soap to bath with, to bathe with, now they don't have enough. If they were used to having enough um, uh, detergent to wash their clothes and things in the house, now they don't have enough. And uh, that, uh, uh, that, that alone is a problem of its own. And the issue of budget, I wouldn't say that we have not improved a little bit. We have improved in terms of budgetary allocations. Although sometimes what is budgeted is not what is released. And therefore, the implementation is not quite as expected. But we, we, we are not really retrogressing budgetary-wise. It is just that uh, we should have been doing better. Oh. All right. Uh, you, you, said, you said something about uh, uh, financial strength and welfare situations uh, making people a bit incapacitated with regards to uh, providing sanitation for themselves. But what comment would you make about uh, the fact that there are situations when sanitation facilities like toilets are provided, but they're either underutilized or mismanaged or both? Yes. Uh, I said earlier that I would add to what he said before. Behavioral change is key here. Uh, most of the problems we have in this regard are uh, behavior related. Uh, people don't like to wash their hands when they come out of the toilet. People don't want to take the trouble to dig uh, their toilets or provide one for, them, for themselves and the family. Uh, they think that, well, anything can serve. Um, that's not good enough. Even when you go to the villages where they have some of these facilities, we still have other health-related problems that are environmentally related too. For example, an animal dies in the village, a goat, a dog, or whatever. They throw it into the, into the stream. And somebody down the line is going to fetch that water to drink. Some children are going to go into that stream to go and, bath, and uh, take their bath. Some people are going to go and wash their clothes. So what do you think is your own a uh, problem being thrown away is a gift or problem to another person somewhere down the line uh, in the village, for example. Yes, uh, even here in town, there are some people who are very reluctant in using the toilet, even for urination. They go behind the walls, they go behind the trees, they go behind the cars. Discipline is what we need. Behavioral change is what we need in those circumstances. If there is a toilet nearby and uh, you can uh, hold it until you get there, why don't you do it? And I know there are some cases where it is not possible. That's understood. 
um, especially with the elderly. But to, for the young people in particular, the, 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 the reluctance to obey the rules, even personal rules of hygiene, is a key problem that we have. Uh, I also smell ignorance. Uh, let, let, me, let, me, let us hear uh, Semiye one more time, uh, maybe a bit of comment. I see you're itching to comment on that. But again, I want just to, you know, consider the fact in the statistics that we have available to us that 771 local government areas in Nigeria out of 774 are implicated in this habit of open defecation. That is alarming. My question is, is our situation hopeless? <laughs> our situation is not hopeless. On the World uh, Toilet Day, I read quite a number of uh, reports, and it, it's sad. But let's come to the city. For instance, I will take uh, an example of uh, this uh, popular uh, business environment in Area 10, uh, called uh, UTC and uh, the Mob Plaza. You go check around the waterways that were built around uh, those uh, facilities in the daylight. You see a lot of uh, defi people defecating, and then this this in the city. That's in the heart of Abuja uh, federal capital. This this not far fetched. You can go there tomorrow. You 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 you, you made these things. Uh, we go to some uh, abattoir where they slaughter a uh, cow that we eat. I, I wonder why, how we even survive in Nigeria. I, I, was, I was telling my wife sometimes, say, the God that lives in Nigeria must be different from other gods that, you know, lives with other countries. I visited uh, the one in uh, Suleja. I visited the one in Gwabolada. I was scared. In fact, there was a day I had to go to the market to see where they kill chicken. The provision of water, the water these people put in their bucket to uh, make the chicken for money. That's what they use. The thing looks stinking, and people line up and fetching and buying chicken, even seeing that situation. And so, I, 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 like the uh, doctor said, this is building an habit. It's, it forms people. If I come from the village, where I don't have facilities such like toilets and have been used to open defecation. That's how my life was built. By the time I moved to the city, and I now have toilet uh, facility. I have enjoyed open defecation, and it has become a culture. Most times, you even see somebody who has a toilet facility in his home. But because it has been, it has been built over the years, he will still sneak out sometimes to go and do this thing until this facility becomes so available from cradle that we get used to it so much that it becomes so uncultural for how how on earth will I just see myself, you know, even eating myself, urinating in the public or doing it. it, it but we, are, we probably will get there. Yes, but I, I, it, I, at, at, the pro, at the moment, it's a problem of attitude, culture that has been built due to in availability of these things from onset. Mm. Uh, uh, entrenched, you know, kind of, but I can sense what you sense. Doctor, I, I, I believe you do too. You could see the expression on his face as he described those circumstances and imagined them. It's as if you could even smell, yeah. you know, what he was describing. It is that sad and that bad. We'll continue the discussion, uh, but for now, Nigeria Today uh, goes out on the streets to get the views of uh, some Nigerians on improving hygiene practices. There are people that build houses without um, toilet facilities, and then some people don't even have accommodation where they can have all, the, all of this. So most people like um, sleep, those that sleep under the bridge will come out and now defecate in places that they are not supposed to defecate. Like yesterday I was going home, I saw somebody went to the, the waterway and I know definitely he, he had defecated, he was trying to like wear his, uh, uh, this is. so you imagine that if that water carries that, uh, the, the feces and takes it to the environment where people are living, it can. We the people, the governments, we have to put ourselves together 
to take care of this thing. As for the Ministry of Environment, I want to say they should look for strategies where these things are being controlled. Like people in, in the marketplace, they should provide toilets, enough toilet for them. It's not just one, two, three, and then they're charging people to pay money before they go to the toilet. It's not everybody that have the money to pay. And though if I don't have the money to pay, I can look for anywhere and just do it and go my way. And then what would you say? That thing is going, going to affect me, it's going to affect someone else there. And then messing the whole place in the environment and then my health is affected. Your health is affected. It's a general thing. We all have to put ourselves together to make it work out. But then the Ministry of Environment should do more about it. We need proper education. People are not responsible. They are not aware about their actions. You know, they need to be educated continuously. You know, that's where the um, National uh, Orientation Agency comes in. They're supposed to be orientating people continuously of the danger of passing uh, uh, waste or passing refuge on the drainage and all that, because these are some of the things that cause uh, flooding and all that, where all the drainage uh, 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 channels are blocked. At the end of the day, the floods will not have uh, any place to go, you know. So those things are very, very important. Then another thing is that they need to punish offenders. If people are punished for the wrong they are doing, you know, they will sit up. This country today, we have impunity everywhere. People do whatever they like, you know, they shit anywhere, they piss anywhere, they throw refuge anywhere and all that, because they feel nothing will happen. You know, you can't compare uh, the, uh, that's the white man culture with an, an Nigerian culture. An African culture has to do with hygiene. So, the way our brought up has been, that's the way we grow up to be. And so in the settings of the, the, that the white men, you can see everything is under control. But here in Nigeria, it's everywhere. Like mine, you see, this. since I came to this market, I came with this water. It had for me to throw it away because I know where will I throw it away. But I've seen everywhere, it's very filthy. It, it's boiled down to your brought up, how you were, were brought up as a society. So that's how it affects. That's how it affects. So society, our brought up in the society has affected our area. That's why. You know, I was brought up in an environment whereby you don't litter things around. I came into this market with the water full. When I, I didn't see any way to dispose it, so I have to hold it. So it's all boiled down on our upbringing. Unedited views on open defecation and general hygiene practices there. The conversation continues here now on Nigeria Today. And still with me in the studio is uh, Semi A. Michael, a public health analyst and a uh, public health expert in the person of Dr. Isaac Akuma Eboja. I was watching your body language. I'm sure you have some reaction to those strong views and opinions. Dr. Eboja? Yes. First, somebody mentioned that uh, um, lack of hygiene is, a, is our culture. It is not our culture. As a matter of fact, cleanliness, if you go to the villages, even the oldest people in the village wash their clothes, they, they wash their dishes and plates before they eat and after they eat. So that is not our culture. I disagree with that. Then the, um, the issue of this is how I was brought up and therefore you will propagate whatever way you were brought up. Your grandparents were uneducated. My, my grandfather was uneducated. My father was semi-educated. But I, I, if I were to do what they did, then I should not go to school. I should be uneducated like them. We should graduate from what, what we were to what we are supposed to be. And they, they believe that um, that is the way I was brought up and therefore it is not my fault. Right. It's a wrong belief. Okay. okay, I also heard something, uh, Semi, I don't know what I heard. I heard somebody proposing sanctions to make people comply. Yeah, think? I think uh, what we're advocating for is change. Uh, attitudinal change, which is key. And also, uh, punishing offenders is not bad. But at the same time, we have to also be objective and be realistic. Uh, like the other guy said, maybe culture, the way they were brought up, probably... Uh, not good to continue doing the wrong thing that you were brought up uh, with. No, but wrong no, 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 no. Withstanding, we also have to advocate for provisions that will make some of these facilities available and not mm. just a luxury. 
I have a son, for instance, now. It would be so uh, hard for him to say he wants to go out and, uh, and defecate. Unlike, uh, I also have people who live close to uh, a, a local community at the adjacent of where I live that were typically poor and they don't have a, they don't have toilet facilities uh, in their homes yes. so the the culture be, the, the way my son will take such discussion and the way theirs will take it it will be different and these are the gaps we have created because of poverty that uh, this it was man made mm -hmm. eventually all excuses no good enough reasons yeah. uh dr Berger. Uh, we're moving on already, mm -hmm. you know, by, by the comments that came from uh, the streets and from what we have said in the studio now. Uh, can you think of any other things that we should do uh, that would be our focus as a people in trying to curb this unhealthy practice all across the country? Yes, I think I would want to re-emphasize the issue of uh, little punishment for some of these offenses because they are public related. They're not only personal. What, what punishments would you recommend? Um, if you go to Kuwait, for example, or you go to Iraq, for example, or Saudi Arabia, where many, many of our people here go for pilgrimage, you will not see somebody going, I mean, urinating outside and not being punished. You would hardly, very hardly see a man, an Arab man, urinating outside. Okay. Here it is not a problem. They just turn their back. Even when there are ladies <coughs> standing nearby, they just turn their back on the lady, on the ladies, and they do what they want to do. Mm. That's punishable. Mm. Because it is not just a personal um, uh, offense in this case. You are of offending the public. Mm. Just like when you are a nuisance on the street, the police arrests you and charges you with uh, 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 di um, disruption of peace. Mm. You are disrupting he health too. Mm. So I would uh, suggest that we have some type of legislation that will punish people, especially in the cities, for the faculty outside mm. or urinating outside. But let me also make mention of something that is uh, habit related. There are people who use water when they use their toilet for cleaning themselves. This habit is largely in the desert areas where they don't have flowing large volumes of water. But we have only succeeded in copying using water to wash our, 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 our anus but not washing our hands then after. If you go to Arab countries where this is a habit, where this is a culture, using water after toileting, they make sure that even in public toilets, there is a soap. And where there is no soap, there is a ash for them to wash hands. And people necessarily wash their hands after they go to the toilet. Here, we have many cases of people who use water to wash themselves after they, after they go to the toilet, but they don't wash their hands with soap. Then after, therefore, you carry your feces from wherever it came from, oh, no. and then you share Doctor, it with. Doctor, please uh, don't complete. Yeah, please don't, please don't complete that. But it is Thank true. You. It is. It and is. It is a serious. It is. We have actually run out of yes, time. and it is a serious habit that we need to get rid of. Yes, yes, and that is why we're doing this enlightenment. Um, time has actually run out on us, but I'd like to hear Samir. Uh, say something in conclusion as somebody who is out there in the field. Yeah. We are aware about um, uh, the Nigerian government's efforts to achieve 100% provision of sanitation sometime, you know, tallying with uh, SDG 6 uh, and the plan to end defecation by 20. Just 10 seconds, what's your assessment of this uh, effort? Uh, we, we still have long time, uh, long distance to cover. The, the, the government, uh, it, it has improved, uh, to be sincere, but we need to do more. Uh, we need to call more for uh, inclusive uh, budgeting so that it, people, we, we get the need of the people and we know where those needs specifically need to be cited away from our usual uh, way of uh, budgeting, just sitting down in the office and cooking, not minding if that's what ne was needed and that's where it is needed. All right. Uh, I think we've had a great conversation. Thank you to my guests, but this is all we can take in our half hour slot for Nigeria today. Uh, on behalf of my producer and the entire crew, I uh, appreciate Samir Michael, our public health analyst. Thank you so much. And also Dr. Isaac Akuma Egboja, our health, public health expert for your contributions of the program. Thank you very much and good night.
and uh, I want to appreciate you for watching the program. Remember, Nigeria Today is on weekdays, same time. So join us tomorrow for Thursday edition. You can also watch any edition online at www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24 Hub. My name is Kande Daniel. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.